Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is six o'clock. Time to begin our April 21st meeting. At this time, we'll call ourselves to order. And uh, Larry, we'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mayor and members of City Council. Members of the general public with us this evening. The uh, City Council uses the consent agenda to consider items that are non-controversial and routine. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and the vote of Council. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Council member or a citizen with the consent of Council. The consent agenda contains the following items. And there are six items on the consent agenda. Item one has includes six sets of minutes. And the seventh item is a summary of contracts awarded, change orders approved, manager's settlement of claims, and manager's discretionary fund. The total of those disbursements are $221,000. Item two is the ordinance amending City of Monroe's standard specifications and detail manual. The major revisions include requiring eight foot wide sidewalks for arterial and collector roads, removal of airport road from sidewalk requirements, and the third, adding private street standards. Item three involves three budget amendments, first of which is transferring funds from the Monroe Union County Economic Development Fund balance for operational activities involving uh, two items, the marketing in uh, the, the Charlotte Business Journal and Oxford in Intel contract totaling approximately $40,000. The second budget amendment is a donation to the police department from Advanced Driver Training Services, Inc., approximately $150 to be used for youth programs. The third budget amendment is for a wheel tail assembly or the Tinkerbell. It's approximately $5,000 and it's a difficult part to find. And uh, this, this purchase will support modifying the tail wheel assembly and allow use of the tires that are in greater supply. Yes, it's fine. Fourth item on consent agenda is a call for two public hearings for May 5th. Both of them involve zoning map amendments, the first of which is to request uh, for property located at 100 yeah. Broom Street from General Industrial to, condi to Conditional District. The second is for property located at 806 Circle Drive from Office Transitional to Conditional District for a crematorium. The fifth item on the consent agenda is, is allowing an advertising <coughs> unpaid real estate property taxes. This will allow the staff to advertise uncollected property taxes mounting uh, in in the amount of $471,305. The sixth and final item on the consent agenda is the award of contract for Nelson Heights Tank Interior Recoding and Repair. There were five vendors that were qualified or encouraged to bid. Bids range from $111,000 to $178,000. The staff is recommending acceptance of the low bid of $111,000 for utility services company. Motion to approve. And second. I have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Hearing none, that'll pass. That'll go to the regular agenda. Item seven, consideration of award of economic development grant uh, public hearing. Uh, Ms. Patay, Mr. Patay. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, Manager Faison. It's my pleasure to bring before you tonight an economic development incentive grant. Um, in the form of acceptable consideration for the sale of approximately 57.49 acres of land and the conveyance of this land under North Carolina General Statute 158-1, <coughs> subsection D2, to ATI Specialty Materials, also known as Project Pipe. ATI Specialty Materials, formerly AllVac, was founded in 1957 here in Union County for the purpose of producing specialty metals in a vacuum process. Since that time, ATI has grown into an international leader in metals and aerospace super alloys. ATI has operations throughout the United States and abroad. Their customers include airframers and engine builders such as Boeing and Airbus, Rolls-Royce, and General Electric. It is safe to say that almost every plane flying in the world today has some ATI metal on it. 
ATI is considering a project on the remaining 57.49 acres of the uh, Airpoint Industrial Center. If our community is selected, their project would include a new building and machinery and equipment at this location. The city of Monroe has been shortlisted and is one of several locations in the U.S. Uh, for this project, and their project decision time frame is expected by the end of 2015. If Monroe is selected, the anticipated new taxable investment in building and equipment would be approximately $65.5 to $70 million over the next five years. The incentive does not require a minimum job creation, but the project has the potential of creating 70 additional jobs to the over 1,400 that they currently have in Monroe. Their average wage for these 70 would exceed $60,000 per year. The company began conversations with our office earlier this year and has indicated incentives are an important factor for the corporate, uh, corporate folks in Pittsburgh as they look at the final uh, decision location. Monroe and Union County Economic Development Board of Advisors have discussed this project at their March 10th regular meeting and we bring this incentive to you today with their full support. The incentive is in the form of consideration for the sale of land in lieu of a traditional incentive grant, similar to what we've done in the past. We are recommending that the sale of the 57.49 acres of the Airpoint Industrial Center for $100 in cash and $1,052,562 in other prospective revenues to the City of Monroe in the form of new property tax, new sales tax, utility, utility charges, etc. The incentive is based on the company's potential investment of the $63.5 million over the five-year period. Based on the projected investment, the city would receive uh, at the current tax rate, assuming a consistent assessed value with no depreciation, an ad valorem tax of roughly $1.76 million. Again, that's over the taxable grant period those five years. The actual tax revenue received by the city is calculated using the assessed value of the investment each year depending upon the depreciation schedule and the timing of the investments by the company. Union County Board of Commissioners awarded an economic development grant last night at their regular meeting for $1,490,000. This project also achieves a cost-benefit analysis ratio of 3.37 to 1, or roughly a 337% on the return on the investment that Monroe would make in the project and that's over a 10-year period. Therefore, the Monroe Union County Economic Development Board of Advisors and staff recommend the sale of the 57.49 acres for $100 cash and other consideration totaling $1,058,562 to the city. That other consideration, again, in the form of additional property tax, sales tax, and other utility revenues uh, as permitted under the general statutes. We'd also ask that you would direct staff to develop the sales agreement and authorize the mayor to sign. Tonight, we would like to welcome Mr. Hunter Dalton up here. Uh, Hunter is the executive vice president of ATI, as well as the president of ATI Specialty Materials, and he's available to answer any questions you may have. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm ready to answer any questions you have. Let me, let me just say something. Not, uh, Monroe has been really honored to be the number one ranked city in the state of North and South Carolina, number three in the Southeast on recruiting and retention of aeronautical industry. And the reason of that is Mr. Dalton and uh, uh, Teledown Oil, which is ATI now. And we thank you. Um, we're honored that you're considering us for the expansion and uh, what a great corporate citizen you've, you've been. I'd like to, if I may, I'd like to, First of all, on behalf of our employees, uh, I have the privilege of, of having been working for this company since 1981, and our roughly 1,450 employees here and in, in, uh, right here in the Carolinas. Uh, on behalf of them, I'd like to thank you for supporting our journey this far, and uh, thank you for your thoughtful consideration of this project. Uh, uh, just a little bit of the history, if I may. Um, transition in our company, when I came to work here in 1980, 81, the old AllVac was less than $100 million a year company. Today we're over $1.2, $1.4 billion a year company, and we've done that with the good folks here in uh, Rowan Union County, and, uh, a, lot of, a lot of folks, not, not me, a lot of good people, good, hardworking people, and, and we're privileged to be able to continue that journey and to continue to grow, and uh, uh, we'd, uh, you're, you're in the mix. We, uh, we'll do everything we can to see if we can have a, a good show. I'd, 
<laughs> welcome any questions. I love to talk about this organization, love the company. I just suck at what Mr. Kazar said, yeah, but a great corporation for our city. It's, it's done so much for our, our aerospace industry. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to work with you. And we hope that uh, we can get this new addition right here in Monroe in our business park, because it would be such a boost to Monroe and Union County for a project of this size to come forth. And thank you for all you've done in the past. You've been great. Anyone else? Any other council members? No, the other thing is, I know that y'all run a good organization. I hear a lot of compliments from your employees. And usually you don't always hear that part, but I hear a lot of, of compliments from the people that work all day. So I think y'all have a good organization. Well, we work hard together. Good mind. We work hard together. We appreciate it. Anyone else? Thank also, you, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd also like to thank Hunter. For, he chairs our EDC board. Yeah and really, really uh, does a lot for the community in more ways than just being the CEO of Teledyne. Right, absolutely. Anything else? Thank you, Mr. Thank Dalton. you. This is a public hearing. Is anyone here who would like to speak in favor? Anyone else who would like to speak in favor? Not hearing. Is anyone here who would like to speak in opposition? If not, we'll close the public hearing to take action. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any objections? Hearing none, that's passed. Mr. Dalton. Thank you very much. Item 8, uh, consideration <coughs> of economic development grant uh, for another Lone Star project. Yes. Mr. Chris. Thank you, sir. Um, Mayor, Council, Manager Faison again. My pleasure to bring before you tonight. The, the all that project uh, that we've brought before you tonight is significant. Um, probably one of the top 15, top 10 projects that we've had in, in Union County history. Um, what we bring before you now is the second largest. Um, project Lone Star, which is still extremely confidential. Uh, we're not uh, at the liberty to release the name as of yet publicly. Um, but we're asking for, uh, uh, or Lone Star is requesting a level four modified uh, incentive grant um, uh, for their for their project. Now, Forty years ago, Lone Star pioneered the field of automated composition and data publishing using state-of-the-art computer technology. Since that time, Lone Star has grown into a national provider of data-driven publishing and marketing communication services for major U.S. organizations. Lone Star is headquartered in California and it has a, uh, additional operations in Texas. Um, they are uh, considering the acquisition of the Turbo Mecca facility in the Monroe Corporate Center and creating an East Coast presence in the city of Monroe. If our community is selected, their project would include building improvements and new machinery and equipment at this location. The city of Monroe has been shortlisted along with a couple other locations in South Carolina. A decision is expected later this month. If Monroe is selected, the anticipated new taxable investment in building and equipment would be approximately $140 million over the next 10 years. This project has the potential of creating 250 jobs, averaging over $60,000 per year, similar to the Allback project. The company began conversations with our office in late 2014 and has, in, has indicated that incentives are an extremely critical uh, factor in the corporation's final location decision. <coughs> Monroe and Union County Economic Development Board of Advisors discussed this project at their March 10th meeting uh, and have uh, brought this, we brought this to you tonight with their full support again. The incentive is a modification from our current guidelines due to the fact that the equipment is digital and will depreciate at an extremely fast rate. So by being, um, if you're familiar, uh, a data center such as uh, Google or Facebook, um, even the computers on desks depreciate at very fast rates. Same thing, this has such a heavy digital component that it will depreciate fast. So that's one of the reasons that we're having to modify it as well as look at a longer term uh, for this incentive grant. So this modified level four grant will not exceed $1,430,000 based on an investment of $140 million over the next 10 years. Based on the projected investment in the city of Monroe, in the city of Monroe, the current tax rate Assuming a consistent assessed value with depreciation, the company could pay an estimated ad valorem tax of $1.9 million uh, over that same period. The actual tax revenue, of course, is used 
is calculated using the assessed value of the investment each year depending on the depreciation schedule because that does change annually through the Department of Revenue of the state as well as the timing of the company's investments. Union County approved a very similar grant. We'll use very similar language in both contracts uh, for the company last night. This uh, project also achieves a cost-benefit analysis of 4.75 to 1 over the 10-year grant period, again a 475% return. Therefore, Monroe and Union County uh, Economic Development Board of Advisors and staff recommend the award of this performance-based Level 4 Modified Economic Development Incentive Grant to Project Lone Star not to exceed $1,430,000 over the next 10 years, and that would begin in fiscal year 2017. I'd also uh, ask that you direct staff to develop the contract and authorize the mayor to sign that. Tonight we would have, they are currently on US 74. They have discovered oh, our traffic. Four. So they are about in Indian Trail, maybe beyond Indian Trail at this point. They're trying their best to get here. So if they show up before the end of the meeting, we will introduce you to them. But the president and several of his staff are in from California. Um, so they are, they made the mistake and went to Charlotte at the end of the day and try to get back. So uh, we, uh, they apologize for that and we do appreciate your, uh, your sympathies to them as they sit on 74. Any questions? Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Is anyone else who would like to speak in favor? Anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and take action. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that project is approved. Mayor, I got a comment. Yes. Sir. Stand up, Chris. You and Ron. You and Ron. Since January the 1st of this year, if everything that these two gentlemen are working on comes to uh, reality, they will have brought in over $300 million worth of industry into Monroe and Union County in uh, five months. That is absolutely phenomenal. For a small city that doesn't have interstate access, you guys are amazing. I just want to thank you for what you do and, uh, and uh, keep up the good work. Here, here. Item 9, Completion of Pavement Repair, St. James Villas. Who's that? That's Jim. Uh, Jim. <coughs> um, wait a minute, I think Jim needs to speak first, I. Vi's <laughs> <laughs> just anxious to get started. Good evening. Uh, I plan to give some background on this project. Yeah. St. James Place, uh, the private streets within St. James Villas were accepted for maintenance by the City Council at a meeting on May 6, 2014. Funding was also approved at the meeting to allow the work to be completed as part of the City Summer Resurfacing Contract. The financing agreement executed with the St. James Association provided for the Homeowners Association to pay one half of the final cost of the repairs to the City of Monroe in 10 equal annual payments. The project was awarded the box paving on August 19, 2014. The contractor initiated work on the streets within St. James Villas on October 6 with four death asphalt repairs <coughs> and discovered subgrade issues in the first quarter sack, requiring more extensive repairs. The house we had the contract moved the following day to the entrance roadway, St. James Way, and again they discovered areas where uh, Fabric had been placed underneath the stone and asphalt to create soft areas in the subsurface. And these uh, first subgrade soils were revealed giving away to areas that pumped underneath the weight of the uh, construction vehicles. Pursuant to the subgrade issues, staff stopped all the asphalt repairs within the uh, development and obtained change order number one to reclaim the streets with uh, cement to provide a more suitable structural base for the asphalt riding surface. Due to the concerns with the subgrade, the entire development was reclaimed by the contractor with the exception of the quarter sacks. So on the quarter sacks, due to tight turning radiuses, we use our street division forces to make those repairs. Uh, as indicated in the summary in your package, the additional cost is about $60,763 for the uh, project. The original estimate was $126,000. 
$510, with the final cost being $187,724. The uh, city manager and city staff met with Five White, <coughs> president of the Homeowners Association, on March 23rd to review the overage. The possibility of extending the payback period from 10 to 15 years was discussed during the meeting. And this would spread the additional cost of $3,000 because over six, they're responsible for half of that over an additional five year period. And that would enable the payment to remain about the same for the 15 years instead of the original 10 years. Ms. Ryan expressed that the property owners within the development were opposed to the additional cost. Now as we moved on to the uh, transportation committee. And at the meeting on April 7th, uh, we had a short discussion regarding the additional costs, and then uh, the committee made no recommendation to refer this to the city council for final determination. And we've identified three options for consideration by city council. One is to follow the approved financing agreement requiring the homeowner association to pay one half of the final cost of repairs and 10 annual payments of $9,364 each. Modify the current financing agreement from a 10 year term to a 15 year term, requiring the homeowner association to pay one half of the final cost of repairs and 15 annual payments of $6,242 each. Third option is forgive the homeowner association of their share of the cost overrun of $30,000, leaving the annual payment at the original amount of $6,325 for the 10 year term. Options uh, one and three can be done without approval of the Homeowners Association. Option two would require approval by both the City Council and the Homeowners Association. Any questions? Go over your third one again. I didn't quite understand it. The third one's just forget the cost overrun that the Which Homeowners Association is about responsible for. Okay. When did this um, paving take place? Uh, this paving took place in what was October. November. And when was the city notified that there was going to be more? When was the city notified? Well, we did the change order. The change order was approved on. Uh, find it here in a second. We approved the change order number one, October thirtieth. And did you notify Ms. White or the HOA? We did not at that time. So when they did They were not notified until March. So the city just went ahead and done it without the permission, authority, or whatever the homeowner said. Well, Is that see, it had to be repaired. The streets needed to be repaired. They were underneath city maintenance. We Correct. set the maintenance on May 6th. So the responsibility of the streets Failed to the city. Correct. And there was also um, an agreement with the homeowners association that they would pay that amount, a certain amount. Is that correct? Yes, they would pay half of the final but cost. But then when they the did the paving, lower, it would be reduced. But when the paving was done, then there was um, an additional cost. That's correct. And the homeowners were not notified, the HOA. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Okay. I've got a question though. Some of this additional cost is coming from the paving company, am I correct, or change orders that's sort of been disputed? The additional cost is from a change order with that paving company, but that would have been with any company. Mm -hmm. We would have encountered the same issues. So when we originally evaluated the development, we went in and did a proof roll, mm -hmm. and we tried to identify any bad areas we could. And once we started to work, basically, there was a bridge between, you know, the asphalt was forming the bridge, and once we started working, it just started moving. And that happens sometimes with these type of soils in the area. It just starts moving, you gotta come back and re regroup, and in this case, we decided to use reclamation with cement, which is, that's typically yeah. what we do. That gives us a sturdy foundation. What was the chamber, Jim? I can kind of read between the lines. Uh, what you said, but what, just what was the change order? From what to what? What we did was we stopped all four depth repairs within the development. And instead, we asked the contract to give us a cost for reclaiming the development and adding cement. 
That's where you take in fake equipment. And you line up the pavement Put that's you. there. And you incorporate it into the subgrade. Mm -hmm. And you add cement to keep it straight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Lloyd? Thank you, sir. Uh, I have a motion to Ms. Wright. Am I saying that right? Yes. Uh, I, if you'd like to speak now. All right. Thank you. And uh, thank you uh, for hearing us, and thank you for what you've done so far. We especially thank Jim and Sarah for all their work with us, too. I feel that in order, I know you guys are sick of hearing my same speech over and over, but in order to get the points made that I feel need to be made, I'd like to address um, a number of items. Uh, St. James is a planned unit development with 65 home sites in six common areas. Uh, the plan was originally presented to the city of Monroe and to potential buyers described as a senior gated maintenance free community with 70 townhomes and common areas to include a pond, a swimming pool, a clubhouse and putting greens. The first townhomes were built in 2005 and by 2008 40 townhomes were completed and all but six lots were purchased by the builder. The townhomes sold quickly until the collapse of the housing bubble and combined with the problem that our developer would not uh, complete the amenities, uh, the homes stopped selling and the prices dropped. There was, um, at that time, um, it was not the city's requirement for the 50% build out, but later it was, but we had no note put on our plan that the builder had to do the amenities by a certain period when a number of homes were built. The developer sold all but six of the lots to uh, Hobart Smith Homes by 2008 for a considerable amount of money. You're talking about 64 lots at $35,000 each. So he pulled in quite a bit of money, but he did not keep his agreement and his promise to the homeowners to complete everything. The next thing that I'd like to point out is that Lester Presley development was supposed to complete a turn lane off of James Hamilton into St. James Way. He did do one, and at that time there was a bond for that turn lane at $46,000, and it was there for one year, and for some reason it was not renewed for the following year. So that money was lost that should have been left there. The city determined that that turn lane was not to standard and had to be rebuilt, and the city did uh, also bear that expense. Lester Presley Development was allowed to bring in prefabricated modules to build a clubhouse. The estimated final cost for that whole project was only $70,000. The structure was not the same standard or quality as the homes being built in the community and it never completely passed all the inspections for the city of Monroe. A substandard handicap ramp was constructed and did not meet the code requirement of one foot for one inch uh, <coughs> to the entry off the ground, but yet it had passed inspection. The developer stopped working on the project in 2010, but continued to collect homeowners dues of $400 per quarter. The homeowners, with some effort, finally got control of the HOA in October 2012. At that time, we had a zero bank account and no financial records, and he refused to give us the banking records because he commingled it with other businesses. We sought legal advice, and we were told that we would spend upwards of $30,000 trying to get uh, money from him, and probably all we would get are six lots in the community. With that in, in mind, then the next thing that we decided is that the homeowners would have to come together and find a way to make um, uh, the community finished in some respect, and also to uh, restore some of the lost equity in our homes, because with the drop in prices of the sales, all of us lost equity. The homes were our, the, excuse me, the roads were our priority and we got a quote from a paving company just to top coat the roads 
and 2012, it was $65,000. We considered our other options and we decided that because this was a, a senior uh, community and almost all the homeowners were retired people over 55 years of age, that we wouldn't be able to maintain all this long term because the community was not built out with the 70 homes as promised. So we turned to the city of Monroe and we asked them for help. After two years of going back and forth with meetings, we finally got an agreement that would be 120,000, but then it was requoted uh, re to 126,000. We signed that agreement and went forward with it. Um, having that in place, we felt confident that we could take some of our funds because we decided that we would maintain the $1,600 a year annual uh, dues and that we would build a reserve and that we would try to finish the <coughs> community because we all bought a package deal. We paid the price for our homes to include the amenities and to also be a maintenance-free community. And the, those uh, dues initially paid for a blanket insurance policy that covered all the exterior of our homes. We had to drop that. <coughs> we had to drop the fact that all the exterior maintenance was supposed to be provided too. So essentially, the only thing homeowners got was just the landscaping for their $1,600 a year. And by feeling like we had the roads covered, then we started working. And we discovered that we had a problem at the pond because it was built incorrectly and there was a cave in. There wasn't the correct field dirt used around it to support it. And when it caved, the pipe broke apart and the water was draining out. So that was uh, $3,300 the homeowners had to pay. To bring the clubhouse to standard and to um, level the um, floors, to rebuild all the handicap ramp and everything else that needed to be done, that was an additional $40,000. There was a wooden fence that was falling down that we replaced at $5,600. So we incurred quite a number of expenses trying to bring it to standard, thinking that the roads the situation was resolved. Additionally, the Union County assessed our, um, the tax value on our homes at the selling price. So all of us who purchased there in 2006 to 2008 were paying for, again, the package deal taxes on that. And um, we um, tried at that time, a number of us appealed trying to get it lowered because the equity, as I said, we'd already lost in our homes, but we didn't couldn't get that. With that tax assessment, the city of Monroe collected over $400,000 from 2006 to 2014 for the, from the homeowners in St. James. The city of Monroe's budget, overall budget, said 9.2% of their budget would go to transportation to the roads. If you consider that, we paid in $400,000. If you allotted 9.2% of that, then we'd already paid in $36,800 that we could have had for our roads, and it should have been allotted to us. Additionally, we were taxed at the same rate as people who lived on public streets. Their roads were taken care of. Their lighting, street lighting, was also provided. We had to pay for our street lighting, too. The contract for the street, you'll have to excuse me, I've had a, a little bit of an infection here and I, my, I lose my voice. The contract for the street repair in St. James was approved by the City Council on August the 19th, 2014. And it was signed by the City Manager on September the 9th, 2014. The bid by Boggs Paving Company was chosen, I was told, because it was the lowest bid submitted. Boggs Paving Company was investigated by the FBI on charges of defrauding the federal government. And Kevin Hicks, the former chief financial officer, had admitted his role to the $87 million fraud scheme involving government funding construction projects by July the 23rd, 2014, well before we were ever involved with them. Additionally, um, there was another Arnold Mann who was a estimator and area uh, 
supervisor, and he also pleaded guilty in June of 2014 to defrauding the U.S. DOT. So the homeowners had some concern that we would have contracted someone that was already defrauding the federal government of $87 million. Why would they come into our community and be above board and overall honest with us? How do we know that the charges that they presented to you were in fact really needed and that they were at that level? While completing the work in St. James, additionally, those people, <laughs> thank you. While, while, um, they, um, while working, they additionally cut the electrical line that supplied power from across the street at the entrance of St. James. We contacted Boggs Paving and tried to get them to respond to us, and they never answered us or showed any um, inclination to help us in any way with it. We also contacted the city, but the city referred us to Boggs and also said they felt that the depth that they had uh, uh, graded and taken up on the road would not have influenced it because the line should have been buried 18 inches below the street level. However, that on the one side, it was not cut, but on the second side where it goes on across, it was cut. If that, in fact, was the problem, that it wasn't buried deep enough, it should have cut the line on both sides. It didn't make any sense, the explanations we were given. So we had to pay an additional $2,000 to Boswell Electric to get them to bore under the street and restore the electrical supply to the other side. I also, since Boggs Paving would uh, choose to ignore us, I went to their, directly to their um, insurance company, Lab uh, Liberty Mutual, and I um, uh, did a claim uh, for that particular error. I didn't do it for everything they've done out there, but for that, we did ask for um, them to reimburse us. And of course, they, they had <coughs> Uh, answered us either. St. James has several issues to address due to the developer's failures. $40,000 to repair the clubhouse, the $5,600, the $3,300, and all that that we mentioned previously has been in addition to what they're asking us now to pay the city. At the end of March, the city made contact with the news that there was a price increase on the streets in St. James. I was so surprised because I thought we had this resolved. And given it did say that it could be plus or minus, there might be some expenses that would uh, come up as they did the work. But trust me, if I hire a, contact, a contractor to do a job, I'm not gonna allow him to up the bill 50% without telling me, getting my permission and my cooperation. The other thing that really bothers me is that we already had a contract, a quote for a contract that would just top coated at $65,000. Had we been informed that it was going to be $90,000, we may have chose not to do the roads at all with all the other problems this community had. And I, I feel like that there was neglect in the sense that we did not get informed at, at the earliest date and, and that we weren't involved along the way. I mean, you're spending our money, too, as well as your money. You should have involved us. The, um, excuse me one minute. I'm sorry. Oh. In reviewing this information, St. James homeowners have reason to believe that the developer, Kevin Presley, a county commissioner from 2006 to 2008, was favored in a number of, de of decisions that resulted in the burden of completing our community, first of all, on Hobart Smith, and he really tried. He bought the extra lots. He even paid extra HOA dues to try to get Kevin Presley to complete our community. And then Hobart end up, ended up losing to foreclosure eight homes in 22 lots. Again, that just really hit us hard, and we've lost even more value in our homes now. The homeowners are mostly retired individuals on fixed incomes. 
the homeowners agreed to try to complete the community in order to restore the lost equity in our homes. There should have been more oversight by the city of Monroe to ensure that the community was completed as promised since it was a gated community for seniors and was a new uh, project for this area, nothing else like it. They also should have looked a little harder at Kevin Presley who had never done a development before. This was his first endeavor. He should have been scrutinized and held to the city standards for all construction in our development. Therefore, St. James homeowners are requesting that you forgive the additional debt of $30,381.92 and that Father, we would want you to apply the $36,800 that we've already paid in taxes while you were taxing us at the same rate as the public streets. We'd like you to apply that to the original $63,255 that we agreed on. That would leave us owing you um, $26,455 that we would be more than willing to pay in a five-year period at $5,291 annually. We do appreciate all that you've done, but we feel that the city failed at that time in really providing the proper oversight that this project would have been completed as promised. We feel that seniors deserved a little bit more, <coughs> knowing that we were all going to live there, be on fixed incomes. We've had 12 people to pass away out there. That's proof enough from since 2006 that a lot of us are elderly. We also have 17, excuse me, 16 now, single females out there that are uh, seniors. And I mean, think about the burden financially you're putting on these people when in fact it should have been the city's responsibility in the beginning to make sure that what Kevin Presley sold to you was actually done and, and, and completed as promised. I thank you for your time and again I thank you for what you've done already for St. James but I also feel like you owe us a little bit more and I hope you would choose to help us one more time. Thank you. That's right. Has any of those other lots been purchased since the <clears throat> Excuse me. Has any of the other lots been purchased since the road paved? Yes. Has any building started yet? Yes. Um, Bonterra Builders purchased 22 lots from um, Paragon Bank, the ones that were re uh, repossessed. And then they have um, started with three spec homes out there. And they're supposed to be around two in the low 200s starting. So, One other question I can ask many, and I don't want to put the road project down, but I, I heard in your presentation about a handicap ramp. Yes. They were using, was, but did you say it had not been approved? No, it's finally approved, but what bothered us is that the initial um, ramp that was built was not built to code. You were supposed to have one foot for each uh, inch that is off the ground. Okay, that was corrected. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we corrected it okay. at our expense. Mayor, this uh, came to the Transportation Committee and we just sent it on to Council simply because it does have financial implications and Council has to make the decision. Um, as much as we like seeing by, I'm ready to put this to bed. Thank you, me too. <laughs> I mean, uh, and I do feel that we should have provided more uh, oversight on the roads. We have now got a thing in place that we just adopted on the consent agenda about private streets, so we should never have this problem again with private streets. Also though, and, and, and I'll tell Vi this too, as a buyer, there's a responsibility that falls back on the buyer. Uh, so my motion will be to uh, go ahead and do the original contract that we have with them, uh, not the additional 36000 you were asking, but just the original and us pick up the overage charge and be done with this. You told me number three. Oh. Yes. Yes. Mayor, before there is a motion, any discussion, I need to do one point of clarification which concerns Councilmember Duncan's role. She reached out to me to, uh, we discussed the fact that she is a property owner there and is a member of the Homeowner Association. But based on the fact that there is no additional uh, assessment being asked for by the Homeowners Association, I'm confirming Ms. Wright is, is, is nodding, that's, that's correct. correct, as there is no financial impact regardless of what the city does, if it were to ask them to pay the additional or stay with the original agreement, 
there is no financial impact and under general statute section 168-75 there is no conflict and Councilmember Duncan is free to vote on this issue and does not need to seek council's approval uh, to be excused from voting on this issue. I'll second Mr. Nash's motion on well, that. I think that we dropped the ball back years ago. I think we did too. And it was when I was first on council and you know we've changed it now. This private street will not be an issue again and we still have uh, a good many miles of private street and hopefully it won't come up with those. Um, but you know Vi, you can come back and visit us anytime. <laughs> but you know and also we need to address the box thing. We, we have the same questions you've had. We have no choice. Yeah. Well, to me, I would be going back to them and uh, asking well, for a reduction. That's another battle. Well, I wish we could go back. Well, I'd and, certainly get right in there. <laughs> I wish we could go back to the, the original builder and hold his nose yes. to the grindstone. But, so to but that's all gone. That's water under the bridge. I think we dropped the ball to begin with. You have a motion and a second. Wait a minute. I want some clarification. Like so what we're doing talking right now. The motion is for the original the agreement. It's for the original agreement, which means that the homeowners will not pay anything additional except for right. what you agreed for. That's correct. What we was agreed, agreed in October? For. The sixty-three thousand. Okay. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Oh. Any opposed? Chair, none. That will pass. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, one and all, and appreciate everything. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> uh, Mayor, we have a youth council member here. Zeke is standing back there, or sitting back there. So I'd just like to recognize him. He's one of our youth council. All right, stand up, if you will, please. And your name is what, sir? Ezekiel. Well, we're glad to have you with us, and we, we're glad to have you in our youth council. Thank you for all you do. Y'all do a great job in representing the city of Monroe real well. Thank you for being here, and welcome, and come back again, if you will. Uh, at this time, uh, I'm going to go back, uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. Uh, Mr. Pate, Mr. Pate, I believe you have some guests. Would you like to introduce them, please? Yes, Thank you. This is, again, regarding Project Lone Star. Uh, we have, if you don't mind, Jim, uh, Jim, who, whose last name shall remain right. confidential yeah. until hopefully uh, here in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we're glad you made it, President Jim. Lone Star. Before. And uh, thank you for having me. Yes, so he just I learned a little about traffic here today. Yes, <laughs> which is we, we take all the back paths. I, I need to know those. <laughs> so. Well, I, we, we, we're we certainly glad. You, we can show you around. <laughs> I need certainly that. glad to have you with us tonight. Thanks thank for coming much. down, and thanks for consider the city of Monroe for your project. Uh, we want you to know that we're pleased to have you in our community. And certainly the city of Monroe wants to work with you and the company any way that we can. So that's what we're here for is to work with you and help you. And on the, back on the road in the project, we try to get a we try to get a bypass through for the last 40 years. So I think we're gonna make it this round. So uh, we will get that cleaned up and uh, Again, thank you for choosing Monroe. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anything else from the county? You'd be glad it wasn't Friday afternoon. You'd be stuck a lot longer. <laughs> still be out there. Oh, it's really not all that bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little used to traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think yours is a little bit different than yeah, ours. Yeah, a lot different. Well, we're certainly but, glad to have you tonight. Well, thank you. I'm certainly glad that you pleased to Monroe. be working and, on this. And, and we so. want to work with you any way we can. Well, th thank so you. Welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. Anything else? Are you going to introduce the other fellow? Oh, <laughs> this is Mr. Skip. Skip hey, hey, Skip. Thank you for that. Well, thank you for coming down also, and we thank you for being part of uh, Monroe. And uh, we welcome we welcome you and your company. And again, as I said, uh, Mr. Jim, I believe you said, uh, we're here to help in any way we can, and uh, we appreciate you choosing Monroe. Well, thank you. Hopefully, yeah. next time we don't hit a road close. <laughs> <laughs> We understand. We, we understand thoroughly. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, okay. That puts us on item 10. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, public comment. See you, Hunter. Uh, time for public comment. And I have two people signed up. It, is that Teresa? Am I, uh, at this time. Take one, pass it down. Uh, Teresa Eamon, 513 Everett Street. I really was not intending to come see you again. And then we had Easter Sunday. Um, Easter Sunday at 3 o'clock in the morning, 
our entire neighborhood and street, and Everett Street was woken up by a party that consisted of enough cars that both sides of Everett Street from, Ch um, from Charles to Huff were completely parked through and cars were parked in our driveways. This was for a party at 520 uh, Everett Street. Uh, it is a tenant occupied residence um, and the party went on until five o'clock right about the time that the stone was rolled back from the grave when everyone dispersed because of a gunshot. I'm glad you got that. Okay. Um, five days later, another party took place. This time, uh, and, and we did call police both times, this time it dispersed when five gunshots went off right in front of our house in a house that housed, houses several children. Um, then we got up and instead of an Easter egg hunt, we walked up and down the street and picked up everybody's garbage that they, they had dumped out of their car. And at one o'clock, when the tenants at 518 returned from church, we listened to the most offensive music I have ever heard in my life to the point that the Hispanics took their party inside and came to me and said, is there anything that we can do? Um, and so once again, I'm stressing the rental registration, not, not uh, inspection, but just res uh, registration. I've handed out this particular document for you guys to look at in preparation for our meeting on the 29th. Um, and, and, and I just want you to try and understand what it is like to spend an Easter Sunday that should be spent thinking about um, whatever it is that you do religiously, whether it's, you know, uh, Catholic, uh, Pro Protestant, Mormon, whatever it is, is instead spent unable to go outside because the tenants that live on the street in the in the um, in in the, the tenant occupied homes and it's not all of them it's just some of them and they're repeat offenders as of today 520 as far as i have been told since i came home from work has been evicted um, and the gentleman that lives at 511 next to me was third party threatened that something was going to happen thanks to beth green for increasing patrols for the next couple of nights because these people have made several threats. They, they kind of started threatening us um, in different ways. But I would really like you to take this seriously because this is something that isn't just affecting the historic district streets. The police have told us in the past that the bad streets move from place to place. And until the people that own these buildings or, or live in these buildings can be held accountable and, and that everybody, including police, know wh who they are, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, 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 a homeowner would be a lot more concerned about who was living in their house if they got a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning, just like we all get woken up and children get woken up on a Thursday when they have to go to school on Friday. This is a lot more serious than it looks, and I'm begging you to look at this stuff and other things that we can provide for you so that we can seriously talk about this on the 29th. Thank you so much for your time. We do take this seriously, and uh, our manager will work with the proper department, and if they don't clean up, let me know. Thank you. Mayor, before uh, you go any further, I... Sorry, I was going to. I was going to tell the mayor if he's wanting to to start taking addresses of things that don't get cleaned up. Uh, uh, he needs to uh, broadcast it so other communities can give you those addresses. Yep. This is not the only problem. Oh, we've, got, we've got chronic problems. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yep. Mayor, the one thing I do want to point out is, as council is aware from some of the discussions, I think report we provide on the le what's happening in the legislature is that while you've been handed this about the Raleigh program, um, there are efforts afoot in the General Assembly to uh, restrict, if not eliminate, some ability to do rental registration programs. So we would note that as yeah, you yeah, discuss yeah, this and discuss true. with... It's not true. It actually is true, ma'am. It's not called rental, Senate Bill... Not rental registration. It's Senate, Senate I'll Bill give you an opportunity to speak in one minute. And with all due respect, Senate Bill 442 is currently pending in the General Assembly. It's identical to House Bill 773, which was pending in the General Assembly last year. And there are concerns that the League has raised that this bill will severely restrict and limit. For example, the Raleigh program that you've been providing information on allows fees to be charged. Those fees would be eliminated under current, uh, the current legislation that's been proposed. We would just note that these issues are out there, and as council ask us to take a look at it, be aware that our friends in the General Assembly are making attempts at restricting that ability. So when I know there's this meeting that will come up with the historic in the uh, historic district, we do want you to know that in terms of <coughs> registration, 
We will do everything we can to work on processes that work under current law, but understanding that that ability is being eroded, if not eliminated by the General Assembly. Anything else? No, sir. Uh, we, uh, Donald public, Donald. Com I'm sorry. Donald Donald Donald. Donald. Yeah. Did come to the podium, please. Um, it's inspections that they're looking to do away with. We're not asking for inspections of these rental properties. We're just simply asking so police and so our code enforcement know who the owners of these properties are to hold people accountable. This is an accountability issue, and it's a common sense issue, and that's where we're coming from. So. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Robert, did you want to speak, sir? I didn't mean to overlook you. I just uh, skipped. Right. No I'll do some handouts also. Okay. okay. I only have one because I'm trying to reduce my carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I have enough for everyone. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> I'll put this up there. Maybe. Not the best picture. Um, and this kind of goes along lines with the. Uh, Don had to say, reference, um, we're asking for accountability of property owners. Um, oh, let's turn this way so read a little bit better. And to start off, those pictures were taken of um, properties and all the items were left on the street for at least one week, usually two. Um, <coughs> so a lot of people call me litter Nazi, but I come from an area that uh, exercised the broken window um, policy and it, it does clean up a city. Um, I'm here on behalf of the citizens of Monroe and specifically the historic district. We'd like to thank Mr. Rushing um, with code enforcement and uh, Ms. Lori Purcell and Solid Waste for stepping up in the past couple weeks in an attempt to make a positive change in our neighborhoods. I also want to thank the city's officials who have heard our voices and understand the passion and commitment that we have to save our city and make it something very special we know it can be. All of us want what's best for our city, which is a vibrant, clean, safe, and thriving community. That being said, as we sit here, we are far from those things. And the only way we can ever be able to achieve them is for all of us to work together. Give your employees like Robert Rushing here the tools they need to get their jobs done. We're asking for the city to change the way the code that they have are actually enforced. And give them some teeth so such things as that you see don't occur. Those things sit for two weeks and there's really nothing code enforcement can do about it. Um, help your residents who have taken a chance on the downtown Monroe succeed. Let's end the days of driving through the city and seeing entire houses emptied on the curb only to sit in the rain for weeks on end. End the days of yard after yard full of cars and trash cans. And end the days of living outside of Monroe, live, end the days of those living outside of Monroe calling us the slums. End those days where people are afraid to come into town because they call it sketchy. Those are just a few of the direct quotes from people living outside the downtown area to a resident who asked them to come visit the new farm to table restaurant in downtown. I've also handed you a copy of select post from a thread that we saw on Facebook last night that was part of a post from a young mother who has children looking for a place to live. She was asking for recommendations and mentioned a few properties and locations in Monroe. It was sad to see what people who don't live here had to say about our area. If you find these terms offensive or disturbing, think of how of us who have lived here and invested time, money, sweat, and tears in this area must feel because this is where we live. We're gathering ideas and data on the ways the city can work its various departments and citizens to make a significant difference and we'll present those to you on the April 29th meeting to be held at the Old Armory. We all understand that change doesn't come easy, but it must come for our city and for us to sur sur survive and succeed. Follow the master plan that you have set forward that states you will encourage the revitalization and spirit of the historic district in downtown. And let's hope that one day our city can be branded as a city that's safe, clean, and encourages homeownership and families to prosper here. That's all I have to say. Um, I'd like to ask the city attorney, what does our ordinances say and how can we, can we work to make them stronger or? We are happy to, to our ordinances do allow for inspections. We do have nuisance abatement uh, portions of the ordinances as well. It is a function and I'll defer to the planning director. Um, but it is, you know, our folks have to give citations, give folks an opportunity to cure the problem. If a property owner is not willing to cure the problem, we have to then deal with it, which ends up resulting in city the city contracts for that and 
has someone that cleans it up and then it or we clean it up and then we assess the cost against the property so we can do that and and there's been a commitment i think from the council uh with last year's budget and i think future commitments to keep moving forward. forward with that so it is the you know the work of our code folks to do that as you've noticed that would include what they've done in housing uh so there's been i think a more increased emphasis on that so we do have that and we can look at if there are areas where it's not where we can look at what can be done to further allow us to have the ability to do that we will continue to do that can it's, we strengthen Lisa. can we strengthen our ordinance is that is that a possibility we uh i think right now it's, it's fairly strong but we will be happy to look at that and report back to council this is public comment i don't think we're supposed to be discussing this no. on the eighth off i know i'm not quoting protocol we're not supposed to be talking back to you but on the 29th all of that can really be addressed yeah right. we're not well, really supposed to be talking during public comment well okay. that's because that's our rule and we can certainly that being it's our rule we can certainly overrule our rule so if you wanted to ask for something let's talk about it now we're here it's our rule it is our rule Lisa, that was the question what about the uh the stuff that's piled out we used to pick it up every week now it's every two weeks is that what it's that's one thing that I was going to bring up. Um, the junk and debris in the yards is considered a public health nuisance. The junk and debris that's put at the road is what our solid waste company picks up on the bulky week and that is scheduled for every other week. Staff has proposed um, to go back to every week bulky pickup in the attempts to reduce this concern because it staff's aware of the concern and the issue as well. We're proposing to move forward with how much every would, week. How much would it cost, Larry, to change this from one week? I mean, from two weeks back to one week. I don't it's know, like a dollar a month. It's, it's maybe a, a but, increase. In mm -hmm. Lisa, Lisa I know one of the things is the stuff, the way that Charlotte does it ordinances, and I'm sure Majeeb is probably familiar with that. They send out fines, but I know that they have an environmental court, which is different than we have. Um, but how do they assist their fines in Charlotte for trash cans and things like that? That is done through code enforcement. Code, they have a set of rules that basically the ordinance says that if you have your cart out beyond a certain period of time, you can be assessed a fine for that. If you have garbage out, if you have debris out, uh, you are issued a citation, given an opportunity to correct the problem on your own. If you don't, the city, in that case, what Charlotte does is they contract with uh, companies to haul that off mm -hmm. and then those fees are charged to the property owner that's a civil penalty and if they don't pay the civil penalty it's assessed as a lien on the property that's what I thought I should and so they, and we and we have similar and we actually have that similar ability mm -hmm. we do have the ability with these weeds and grass and nuisance abatement issues and public health issues to charge that as a lien on the property and uh, we've discussed that with code they are aware of it and it is something that we can continue to do. The e-court issue, it's a, the environmental court, that's something that's done by Mecklenburg County, but that only ends up being with the worst of the worst, and it has some impact because the district court judge can say, well, you've done this for far too long, but in a lot of cases, that doesn't reach all the potential issues. Well, we have some of the worst of the worst, Daddy. Well, uh, and these these were two of the items that we were going to be discussing at the community forum, the schedule for next week. Uh, another goal of staff <coughs> that we are currently in the process of revising our solid waste ordinance. Right now, we operate under the civil <coughs> citation process that's provided by state law that we are required to give a 10-day notice um, well, by the time the 10-day notice, the next garbage day has passed and the parks, it's yeah. a mute point. Um, our goal is to revise the ordinance to put fines in there for carts that are not being brought back from the curb, bulky that's put out beyond before the time frame. Um, those are thing, two items that we're going to be discussed at the meeting next week um, that staff is currently in the process of working well, We already with. have the carts involved in an ordinance already. We have it in the ordinance, but the only tool we have to enforce it is the civil citation process, where if we find a violation of our ordinance, we're required to provide them a notice of violation. They have 10 days to correct the violation. That's what we need to change. By the time we go back out in 10 days, another week of trash has already passed. We need so to change that as soon as we can. Why don't we do they this? They get like three citations. We should have changed ever, it already. Not every area is having this problem. It's only certain areas. It's, it's so, all over Monroe. No, well, why can't, why can, I, I, we, can, we can get with our waste people 
and have them tell us what it would cost to come in with one truck in certain areas and get it cleaned up. It's not going to happen in my neighborhood. It's not going to happen in a lot of other neighborhoods. So address the neighborhoods that you're having trouble with and go ahead and do it. Which, well, I don't see anything funny about it, that. It's not, it's all over the city, Leanne. It's not. That's right, it's all over Hey, I'm not talking to you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. One at a time, please. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to speak. Well, let's do it one at a time, please. All right, Lynn. What I'm saying is there are certain areas that is, is worse than others. So why not go ahead and get with the waste people and let them come and address the worst. If, if there's something on Highway 74, they can go out there and pick it up. But that's not going to be as bad as Everett Street. I'm familiar with Everett Street. I coach okay. football. But I'm saying, Lynn, it's, it's a lot all over the inner city. It really is. You can ride to any of these streets and see it. And not just Everett Street, but you can that's go over to College or Johnson. Well, well I'm talking, so I'm about, all over I'm the talking about inner city. I'm talking about inner city, basically. I'm, and rather than just waiting and putting it off two or three months, as much work as we do with the waste people, I don't see why we couldn't get them to come on in there and let's address it. That was well, my comment. It will be an increase in, in cost of service, sure. which will be using tax dollars for that. When What they're basically wants holding uh, people accountable, whether it's own occupied or rental. And I think the issue is bigger than the trash. So that's just I think it is too. Part of it. But see, here's the thing. You, you're, you're talking about holding people accountable. You're talking about three or four months. I'm talking about address the problem because it's a sanitary problem and address it now. I mean, we're probably talking about the same step. thing, It's a Donna. step in the right direction, but we've got a lot more that needs to be addressed. But while you're problem. addressing the other, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and be cleaning up the mess. Does that make sense, sir? Yes, our concern is that even if you change it to one week, the violator, whoever that is, is The same amount of time, it's, it's and we'll just incur we'll just incur the cost. It's more than one issue. It's trash. It's exactly. uh, uh, and, and, and houses that are causing problems. And, and, and it's, and, a, it's and, a quality of life. We've talked we've talked to Mr. Rushing, and one of his problems also it kind of ties into the the uh, uh, tenant occupied property registration is he has a hard time locating the owners of the property to actually issue him a citation. It change. comes back to a, a, a LLC out of New Jersey and a PO box. It's very difficult to track them down and say. Do you realize that your, your, your property is in violation of X, Y, and Z? If there was a rental registration, it's on file with the city. If the police department need to call someone in the middle of the night in Charlotte, they can actually call up a number and say, we need you out here in 30 minutes. But here's my, here's my point. What you're saying takes time. What I'm saying is let's go ahead and clean up the mess and in the, in the interim, work on it. Oh, that'd be great. I love, you know, and we do, and Mr. Russell, as we've called in many times, and they do special pickups for it's a start land pick for stuff, up, right? and, and, no, and we, we encourage we've people got to call. Problem that we need to address too. And like I said, I just think it's and to be honest, with you, I'm kind of glad that those gentlemen left the meeting. I mean, it, it's the, the, here's a corporation bringing you know, hundreds of millions of dollars here, and where are their employees going to live? We'd hope they live in downtown. Part of the master plan is to revitalize downtown. We're putting you know, two million dollars in the theater, which I think is great. And I hate to say it, with all the traffic that you just talked about, the people coming to downtown aren't going to come from Matthews or Charlotte. They're going to come from downtown. So you'd hate to have a downtown that's great with no one to enjoy it. Uh, my, so. uh, Larry, why don't you get with Lisa and try to clean up, just address inner city as they're working on the, uh, on the problem to, to solve permanently. Does that make sense? Anybody else got an issue with that? I don't know. <clears throat> And we have a meeting next Wednesday night with y'all. I think we need to change that ordinance as soon as we can also. And, and put some teeth in it. If you come to the podium, please. I bet you that so we, we have to have it for record, sir. Your name and address, please. Larry Stokes, I live at 511 Everett Street. The problem is, if you take pick up the trash today, next 30 minutes, somebody bringing trash behind the house again, piling it up against the steps for the next two weeks. And it's Used to be at the city of Monroe, they had a truck to come around, flatbed truck, side curb pickup trash every day. And it, when the city of Monroe did away with our sanitation part, that's where we went wrong. 
A lot of jobs was lost. And we in this in city my just went down. I've been here for 59 years. I seen it grow. I seen it grow from a child up. I own my own home. And, and it don't make no sense the way my no look now. Okay. It don't. Okay. It don't. And I and it's, it's, I hate to say it's, it's a shame and disgrace for all you people to hold these seats and see it grow the way it have. It's just a shame. It's nothing being done about it. I'm the only person from my neighborhood to speak in my neighborhood as a homeowner, except for the black community. And I'm sick and tired of it. Something got to be done. Mm -hmm. Something got to be done. And I'm leaving it all up to y'all. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to dress? Okay. Okay, hearing none, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we need to... Uh, only looking for the minutes. <laughs> I've got all this paperwork. I got it here somewhere. We need to prove this. Sir, sir, you need to go into closed session first. Uh, I think before okay. they do not. Yeah, that's right. All right. Do I have a motion to go in closed session? I make the motion we go into closed session. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Uh, sir. Mayor, you need to actually have the. Somebody full, read that. Read that. Okay. There's, there's, I move that we go into closed session pursuant to. Uh, North Carolina General Statute Section 143-318.11A6 to consider the performance of an individual public officer and employee. I have a second. Somebody get second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Right. We're going to close session at this time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I'm tired of talking to y'all. <laughs> okay. Oh, hush. You know, I'm ready to make it.